He is the Donald Brin Chair of Non-Western Strategic Thought at the Marine Corps University. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. I uh, have to get your reaction right off the top here to what you heard President Trump say that he could possibly hold this deal up. Uh, well, the president likes to use, obviously likes to use negotiating leverage across a wide range of issues. And so that is the president's style. Um, a lot of foreign policy experts in Washington don't like the mixing and merging of strategic issues with trade issues. And so uh, it's causing a lot of angst within the Washington community, but this is how the president operates. And so um, we're not surprised that the president is uh, using such tactics. And, uh, but um, uh, that's just how his style is. And so over the last year and a half, that's just how we've gotten to get, we've had to get used to that. So what is your reaction to this historic meeting April 27th? Uh, we're, we're, you're talking about the, 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 um, the president's meeting with a North Korean leader. Well, that's, it's a historic, it's a historic moment. Um, it's an opportunity. Um, there's a concern that, uh, that uh, with such a hollowed out foreign policy State Department establishment, will the president be prepared? It's coming right up. And so that's one of the concerns is that we don't have enough of uh, the expertise to go into such an important in such an important meeting, um, there's, it, the stakes couldn't be any higher. This is no doubt a victory for Moon, who has long been pushing hard for this diplomatic relations with the DPRK. He said at his swearing in ceremony 2017, for peace on the Korean Peninsula, I will do everything that I can do. Why now for this? Well, uh, President Moon is clearly um, of the diplomatic bent. That is, he feels diplomacy needs to come first. The United States always, our concern is always the alliance. And so, um, so President Moon moving forward in such a strong way has often led the, the Washington national security establishment to be a little bit concerned. But on the other hand, um, it's making some progress. And so we, I guess the view is wait and see, sit back and look and see what's going on. Now, one other thing to take note, uh, two additional players to uh, President Trump's uh, cabinet, the state, new State Department, uh, new uh, Secretary of State, and the new Sec National Security Advisor, uh, both well-known national security hawks. So we know that uh, within the White House, we have a vo uh, two voices uh, within the White House and at the State Department who will, uh, will call for caution in terms of being too to uh, op uh, optimistic with regard to any agreements uh, the South Koreans may make with the North Koreans or that we may get with the North Koreans. So Kim Jong-un visiting Beijing, and now we're hearing from Russian reports, Christopher, that he may visit Russia, according to their spokesperson. Japan also saying that Kim Jong-un may meet with officials for a bilateral summit. What do you make of his seeming openness to meet and consider a dialogue? Well, okay, so most national <laughs> security experts in Washington strategists um, have, have, uh, have uh, counseled caution. Be very careful. That is, our experience with North Korea has been uh, that, they, that North Korea will obviously offer the moon and end up uh, offering you, uh, ultimately delivering on nothing. And so the problem is, is that uh, the Kim Jong-un is going all over the map on what seems to be a, a wild diplomatic foray um, we need to be very careful not to be too optimistic with regard to what this actually means. I, in other words, I'm being cautiously pessimistic with regard to what, uh, the, the prospects for what is going on right now. All right, so we know the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is said to be meeting with uh, President Trump in Florida, probably at Mar-a-Lago, in April, ahead of any potential meeting with Kim. With a list of concerns over this potential encounter, what would they be? The biggest concern would be that the President uh, weakens the alliance uh, with South Korea and weakens the relationship with Japan. That is that we don't give away the shop in our, in our um, euphoria to try and come to an agreement with, uh, with uh, North Korea. And that is his, going to be his number one concern, uh, President, uh, Prime Minister Abe's number one concern. That is in the euphoria, the, euphoria the, the momentum that seems to be developing with regard to the diplomatic options that the United States does not give away the shop, does not negotiate, negotiate away something that is going to be very important to the United States and Japan further down the road. Well, it's going to be important to us now. And so that would be number one on his list. Um, secondly, there, there are a number of issues that Japan has with North Korea, which uh, frankly does not rate high on American national security interests. So for example, North Korea and Japan have a big problem with, uh, with uh, uh, 
the fact that North Korea had kidnapped a number of Japanese citizens a few decades in the past and are still holding those citizens. Um, Japan has held that as a very important uh, issue between Japan and North Korea. That, uh, the fact that most Americans aren't even aware of that um, means that that is certainly not going to be high on President Trump's list of things to negotiate with North Korea. But that is going to be something Prime Minister Abe is going to raise with President Trump. You need to pay attention to your, the, the interests and issues of your allies, and please don't negotiate away or uh, move forward without necessarily thinking about the effect this is going to have on your alliance with Japan and on your alliance with South Korea. All righty. Well, Christopher Young with Marine Corps University, we're going to have to leave it there. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.